Faircode On Air, today's webinar, Exploring CSS in Service Portal. I'm Lauren Jankowski, the Marketing Specialist here at Faircode, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm excited to introduce to you your presenters for today, Megan Ahrens, a ServiceNow developer at Faircode, and Michael Kaufman, a ServiceNow architect at Faircode. Before we get started, we'd like to give you some background information on Faircode. Faircode is a premier ServiceNow partner and provides cutting edge technology services, managed services, and staff augmentation to federal, state, and local government organizations. We're proud to have over 270 certifications, partnerships with a variety of technologies, including ServiceNow and Microsoft, and many more. We'll be monitoring the Q&A throughout today's session, so please send in any questions as they arise, and we'll do our best to answer them. As another perk of attending today's webinar, we'll be giving away a $50 Visa gift card. We'll be announcing the winner of that at the end of the session, so make sure you stay on till the very end. Now, I'd like to hand things over to Michael and Megan to dive in. Here's the content that we will discuss in today's webinar. We're gonna be talking about the service portal, uh, purpose and usage, what is CSS, branding of your service portal, page design, other tools you can use in the development of the service portal, and then we're going to do a demo at the end. This is a screenshot of the out-of-box service portal. Later on, we will demo a modified service portal and discuss how it was altered with CSS. Service portal is a portal framework that allows administrators to build mobile-friendly, self-service experience for users. It interacts with parts of the Now platform so users can access specific platform features using Service Portal. Service Portal is often known for the default Service Portal slash SP, but other portals are available for other ServiceNow applications. Megan, what are some of the details about Service Portals that we should know about? Um, most likely, you're interested in customizing the slash SP portal. However, you might also be interested in the HR or CSM portals. You can design your service portal to be as close to your corporate website or design it as a unique experience. Um, you can build a portal for use by employees and also use the CSM portal for use by customers. Um, there are many unique and different possibilities for designing service portals. Service Portal uses technologies such as HTML, JavaScript, Bootstrap, AngularJS, and FontAwesome. For, for those unfamiliar with Bootstrap, it's a front-end component library that help make, makes websites more mobile-friendly and adds consistency to your Service Portal pages and widgets. You'll see Bootstrap used in ServiceNow a lot in page layouts and color schemes. AngularJS is a JavaScript framework which extends JavaScript to add more power to building web pages. Most often in ServiceNow, it is used for data display and manipulation. Font Awesome is a font and icon toolkit. You'll see Font Awesome using glyphs and icons in the service portal. Having experience with web design helps when building a service portal, but you don't need to know those technologies completely to get started. ServiceNow includes a lot of base pages and widgets, which are good examples. Um, the service portal has a flat learning curve, and you can ramp up more um, complex development as you progress in skill. Michael, tell us more about what CSS is and how it applies to the service portal. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on the screen, paper, or in other media. CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once or individual things. In this example on the slide here, uh, if you look at the H1 is a selector, color is a property, and white is the property value. Text align is a property, and center is the property value. If a page used this CSS, the page would have a light blue background color. H1 headings would be centered with white text. Paragraphs or P tags would use veranda font and be 20 pixels. CSS is used in the service portal to control the style and the look of the portal. The easiest way to do branding in the service portal is the branding editor. 
Megan, what kind of changes can you do in the branding editor? Um, you can change the title and logo. The title is used on the browser tab on every page um, and the logo is on the top left corner of each page. You can change tagline and background. The tagline is the text on the main global search and the background is on the main page. And you can change theme colors. These are the colors um, used throughout your site. Hey Megan, speaking of backgrounds, what size logo and background works best? For your background image, approximately 2300 pixels wide by 1200 pixels tall or images with similar percentages. And for your logo, 950 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall, approximately. Are you limited by the branding editor for the style to the page? No, it is just a helpful tool to assist with um, service portal development. You don't have to use it, but it is recommended. Um, in the demo we will do later in the presentation, I didn't use the branding editor when styling the pages. In designing pages, there's a, there's a couple different tools that you can use. One is the page designer, and the page designer lets you control the layout of the page. You can drop widgets onto the page and things like that. There's also, uh, in, in designing those pages, it, it comes with different elements with it. There's pages, menus, and widgets within it. And then uh, the, the pages, that's the individual pages of your service portal. Menus, those are the items on the top of the portal. And widgets are all the individual items within the page. There's also portal and page specific CSS within a page. So you can design CSS that controls all the styling throughout the portal but you can also control CSS for an individual specific page. So there's also other tools that you can use when you're designing a service portal. One is called Inspect Elementor Console. Every browser has Inspect Element and the console. And what you can do is you can right click and you can go to Inspect Element. And by doing that, you can see what CSS a page uses. uses. You can use that to borrow ideas uh, from other websites such as your corporate internet page when you're trying to design a portal or you can use it to figure out what elements of a page on the service portal you can use. There's also a tool I use in Google Chrome but it's probably available in Firefox and other browsers and that's color pick and I use that tool to pick out colors in a web page so that I can use them in my portal. The same kind of tool is called font finder and font finder you can use that to pick out fonts in a page and that use that tool to figure out if it's a veranda font or Arial or any kind of font. And then once you decide, you can find the font you want to use. Uh, you can try to use that in your service portal. And there's also a whole bunch of open source tools that you can use. Open source tools might include a video editor or perhaps an image editor that you use to, to um, uh, edit a service portal. I use those tools sometimes. Okay. All right, we'll go on to the service portal um, demo. This is a portal we designed quickly for this webinar. Um, it is close to out of the box just for this demo. We decided to mock up a service portal similar to the Ferricode website. Um, and I'll show you that right here. You got to reload it a little bit. <laughs> um, so we kind of copied a couple of things from there. Um, um, for this portal, I copied an existing portal. However, um, you can also modify the existing out of the box portal. Um, after the portal was copied, I set up some CSS variables. And you can see that here in my theme, my webinar theme. Um, CSS variables hold values we use in our CSS, like, like a hex color or a font size. And so I changed the brand primary to match the red that you see throughout my service portal. Um, next, I created a theme and CSS includes. Um, so you can see my style sheet here. 
Um, and you can see where I have edited my logo, my font size and um, font family, um, colors of my A tags, um, which are links. Um, I see you made some nice comments to explain what the CSS does. What is what is uh, what are the comments for? Why do you have comments? Um, it's good to comment your CSS to help keep you organized and explainable to the next developer um, or your future self. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So we also imported the Ferricode logo, um, which you can see if we go back here. Okay. And then next we'll take a look at the page CSS. Yeah, at this point, uh, Megan had, had built the portal CSS and uh, had done a lot of the work for the portal. And then I came in to add some refinements to the portal. Uh, Megan, can you uh, show us where the page CSS is? And to get to page CSS, you uh, control right click on the service portal, and then you can go to uh, page and designer. Here in the page CSS, I added some opacity to the search box that you see on the search screen, and I added drop shadow to the text. There's other ways to do that, of course, but uh, that was just one way to make the text stand out more against the background on the search screen. Uh, it also, I thought it would be cool to have the red bar for the icon links like the Faircode website has, and that I'm doing that within the CSS on the page. Now you don't have to use page specific CSS. You can just put it all in your style sheet. But if you're only designing one particular page or you're, or you're just doing a little bit of page editing, this is another way that you can adjust add CSS in a service portal. So we're kind of just showing the different ways you can add CSS to style a page. So this is, uh, this is some of the CSS that I added. And you notice I commented what each which segment the CSS does. That way the next person can understand what I did. So, okay, so now the next thing uh, to talk about that red bar with the icon links like the Faircode website has. To do this, I cloned the out of the box icon link widget. Uh, the Faircode.com links don't use glyphs either like the out of the box icon link widget does either. So to do that, I cut it out of the widget and I adjusted the CSS on the widget to be similar. Let's take a look at that widget. So if you, Megan, if you control right click on the simple link box, and then you go to widget and editor. This is that uh, widget and editor. And while we want to turn on certain elements there, so let's turn on HTML template and CSS and and let's turn on client script and server script too. Let's turn them on. So an element, a widget, has seven important parts. So the first part is the HTML template. That tells the, the widget uh, to render the dynamic view that the user sees in the browser for it. Uh, the CSS part, that's the styling for the elements in the HTML template. And then there's the client script. And the client script is also known in the client as the client controller, and that's do that uses um, it contains client side code for processing data, passing user input and data back to the server, that kind of thing. And then there's also the server script part, and the server script runs server side queries and processes data initially, and sometimes updates data. And then there's also a link function. And you can use the link function to directly manipulate the DOM. I don't really use that much, but that's another thing that 
that a widget offers. But here we're showing that this is another way that you can adjust CSS in the service portal. So, so far we've been able to adjust the CSS in, in the portal style sheet, in the page CSS, and also in widgets themselves, you can adjust CSS. Yeah, so in this brief demo, we use, like I just said, uh, we use portal, page, and widget CSS to design a site. Now this is just a basic portal, but you can get as creative with it as you want, of course. Now, uh, let's see, I think there's a couple of questions in the chat, uh, but I'm only gonna answer the questions that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what they have here. Uh, is there any type of ver specific versions of Bootstrap? How to plan for future release? Which one should it pick? So the Bootstrap that ServiceNow determines what what Bootstrap you get. Um, I think there's a way to look in the portal properties or somewhere where you can s pick what version of Bootstrap there is, but ServiceNow determines that. So you kind of just go with what ServiceNow is, is uh, up for. And the other, what's that, Wengen? I think Maybe. they use an older version of Bootstrap. Yeah. Um, the same thing with like uh, Fun Awesome and stuff, they use an older version of that. Um, right. So it's usually not the cutting edge uh, first version of things. Same thing with AngularJS too. And does it support CS, SAS? Yes. That yeah. was, uh, it does do that. The other variables. Yep. I'm yep. sorry, uh, CSS variables. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the widget CSS code added on a widget override the CSS added on a page CSS. Uh, that That's the term, it, sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, I think the answer is yes, but you of course would have to check, check that. One thing that we didn't talk about that we should is, uh, the use of doing the important tag right. on, on CSS. It's real tempting to put important on all your uh, CSS in the service portal so your CSS works, but you wanna kind of not get too crazy with the important. Because uh, <laughs> if you make everything important, then you're gonna get erratic results. So you don't wanna make everything that's in, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cheap, fix to make everything <laughs> important, but you will pay for it at some point, uh, mm -hmm. making, uh, <laughs> making everything uh, important, but, um, but yeah. See, I didn't know that until we, we dove a little deeper into this, and so I would just throw important on everything. I was like, this is what I want, important. <laughs> yeah. So that's good yeah. to yeah, and sometimes that, that you, you don't have much choice or you right. just want it to work, so you do that. But you kind of want to, every time you do it, you should be hold yourself back a little bit and say, maybe not everything should be important. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, those were the questions. And uh, uh, that was all, both me, Megan and I, thank you for attending the webinar today. And uh, that's all I had. Thank you guys. Yep, so we're gonna go back to the presentation and we're gonna announce our winner then. Awesome, so the winner today looks like it is Deborah Wong, congratulations. We're gonna email your prize to you directly. Um, but don't worry if you didn't win today, don't be discouraged. Every on-air webinar you attend for both Veracode and our sister company Glidefast counts as an entry into our on-air grand prize giveaway of a mirror workout, a $1,500 value, and the winner for that will be at, selected at the end of this month. And I just like to say thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. We hope you enjoyed it. If you still have any more questions, feel free to reach out to the Ferricode team or directly to Michael and Megan. Um, their emails are first.lastname at ferricode.com. And to see more sessions, just visit us on our website. Thank you, everyone.